right. Uh, our, our, I think this is just our second interview here at our, our groundbreaking coverage of the Little America's Cup. Uh, the most exciting thing for us of the year, even more exciting than that thing over in that cold and wet place in Spain. Cold and wet here. It, it actually kind of, it's warmer than it was in Valencia, I'll tell you that much. Um, and a lot more comfortable for us. Uh, we're here with friends, we're here with people that we really respect and that we've been following for a long time. And here I have the Little America's Cup, the International C-Class uh, uh, Championship Defenders, Magnus Clark crew, Fred Eaton Skipper, of course John Casey, my co-host on all this stuff. Guys, welcome to On the Water Anarchy. Thanks, Thanks Again, me. you've been on before. I've been on before. It's a good place to be. I like it, being out here. You're in, you're, in, you're in a bit of a different posture this time. Yeah. Uh, instead of, you know, going to sleep in, in, on the deck of a, 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 a of a trimaran, you're actually going to race for something really special. Pete, pan down for a second. This is the class flag uh, for the uh, for the C class. Fred, tell me tell me about the um, uh, the origin of this thing. I, I can't tell you the real origin. Uh, Steve Clark showed up with the class flag when we had the race in Toronto last time and uh, and told us to hand it to the race committee and make it work and uh, and then left it there and told us to make sure it made it to the next event. So <laughs> here it is. This is my last instructions before leaving Toronto. Steve phoned me. Don't forget the class flag. I'm like, what about the trophy? Don't forget the class flag. You know what? So. G guys in other classes, take a lesson from this. Get creative with your class flags. How cool is that? I know that uh, I, I know that all the photographers out there are going to be taking pictures of it. And again, that's just spreading the word. Speaking of spreading the word, um, there are lots of media here. CNN's doing a piece. The Times is doing a piece. Uh, you guys have already been all over the, 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 the papers. Of course, we've been following this for as long as it's happened. And for the first time ever, obviously, fully live coverage, tracking, onboard audio. What's the goal in all this stuff? What do you think, Mike? Uh, right now, my goal is to win. But for the goal for the bigger event? The goal, the goal with all the, all the effort to try and let people know what's going on is just to... I think the boats are pretty cool, and it's uh, interesting for a lot of pretty people cool. to see what's going... Pretty cool. It's interesting <laughs> for people to see what's going on, and, uh, and we're trying to do our part, since we're part of the production, to make it available to people and, and make it understandable. So... So bringing you guys on board and, uh, and all the other stuff just makes it easier for people to understand. You know, when I was getting into the class, uh, it was kind of like you're on your own, start from nowheresville, and that was a hard barrier until Steve Clark kind of opened it up and made things a lot more transparent. It's like, that's great, and that's the way we want to go. Like, Transparency is good, I think. Transparency is everything. I mean, I, to us, it's everything, and I think, I think you know, the classes that are embracing that in general and the parts of the sport that are embracing that are benefiting substantially. Um, uh, your whole thing's been a soap opera. I mean, from from the from the first, I, I mean, it's a reality show. From the first foiling picture that started off this whole buzz that we that we've been so into, to now, you know, you've got I don't know hundreds of thousands of, of, of views of, of just this sailing anarchy part of it, much less the wider world. Um, uh, but you know, and and it's it is. It's, we we know the players. We know their tone. We know that what they're doing. We know their disappointments and their success, successes. Um, but what about sort of as bigger things come into it? Okay, let's uh, obviously we've got Glenn and and Jimmy here. Um, you've got uh, Team New Zealand prowling around. Team Origin coming in. Other guys coming in. Um, a lot of people sniffing around, and and obviously. If the, the Big America's Cup becomes similar in, in its own way, that will keep, keep driving interest to this thing. Um, what are the worries? How do you manage that process if indeed the interest is there? Um, I'm just going to circle back to what you were asking about before. I think um, from my perspective, and I think Fred shared this, when we were growing up, I loved sea classes. But there are these things that happen in faraway places and magical lands, and you could read about them. It's kind of like heaven in the Bible. You'd never actually necessarily get there. Um, so I think for us, it's been fun to be able to share it with everyone online, just our, our soap opera, as you call it, um, the ups and downs, the flying, the crashing, and uh, all the stuff in between. And um, it's been a lot of fun to be able to share that with people, because I think, to your point, a lot of people out there appreciate it and are really keenly interested in it. And it's a completely different horizon on, on the world of sailing. So it's been nice to be able to open that up to fans or people who are just interested in the boats and the personalities. Um, so. Thank you for making that possible through Anarchy. That's been a lot of fun. Dude, you guys started it all, so, you know. You're asking about what worries do you, might I have, like, if the America's Cup guys get serious, you know, and they put a big campaign together and it's well-funded. Really, I, I don't have a worry about that on account of I still have a great boat there. I'm still going to be able to sail a great boat, and I'm not really going to panic if I lose. You know, if, if Glenn Ashby and Jimmy Spithill beat me this weekend, 
I'm not going to be humiliated by that, right? <laughs> I mean, if I beat them, I'll be pretty proud. And if they beat me, I can live with that. But uh, I'm sailing great boats, and if other people come along, that's good. There's more great boats around. It's, it's, uh, it's really a chance to sail boat, the boats of your dreams. So it doesn't matter if somebody else wants to come along and build a, another boat, a better boat. I think that's an improvement. Are the boats small enough that even if, the, if, if three years down the line or six years down the line, there is big money in this, this is sort of seen as the, you know, the little gem that's sort of p- almost part of the Big America's Cup. Um, is it, is, are the boats small enough that, that a huge program couldn't come in and just walk in and win? With the, if they had enough resources? I, I think it's, if you want a fast boat, it's still an ideas-based thing. We're, I don't think we're anywhere near the limits of, uh, of what can be done to these boats at this point to make them faster. So a guy with a better idea is going to win, regardless of, of it, budget in any real sense now. You gotta, You're not that far from the point of diminishing returns that where it starts God, to get... Look at, Clark, look at Steve Clark's boat right here. I mean, if it's working like he thinks it works, and maybe it does, he's got a potentially a regatta winner for sure, even with his old wing. If our wing's working like we hope it works... We got a pretty fast boat, you know. It's going to be quite interesting to see how things work out. And uh, obviously, hu- a huge budget team has more probability of coming up with a good idea. But that's uh, not so bad. If they they build a better boat, I'll copy it and I'll sail an even better boat after that. Right? It's good fun. John. Yeah. Well, I like to get on the more technical side of stuff. So when you guys go there, my eyes start to get big, you know. <laughs> and uh, my eyes got big looking at your machine. And um, you know, of course, it's the newest one. Besides the Atheon, Athon, Ithon platform, yeah. um, but the newest wing. So, what what was the biggest jump that you made with this wing as compared to the Alpha wing? Back to Mag. Um, I don't know if it was so much as a jump as an evolution. Um, obviously, we tried to do some jumps in the platform development a couple of years ago, and we we retreated a little bit on that front. But with the wing, we've uh, stretched it out, made it a little higher aspect. Um, my time with Oracle, I certainly spent a lot of long, cold nights out on the platform with Tom Spear, who's a great aerodynamicist, and we trade a lot of, a lot of ideas back and forth. I'm an amateur aerodynamicist. I taught myself how to do this stuff, so to be able to hang out with those guys and who do it every day for their job and actually get paid by people like Boeing, um, it was a good learning experience for me. So I think we've just we've stretched it out a little bit, made it higher aspect. Um, we made the decision to go with the new boat quite late in the game for us. Normally we'd start thinking about that in September. We didn't do it until after the cup. So the whole design process was pretty compressed. And part of that was we wanted to recycle some of the tooling we had. Um, so the wing isn't necessarily optimal for what I think we could do right now, but it's definitely a step ahead of where we are with the alpha wing. Uh, design. So like I said, it's a little stretched out. It's similar sections. We've changed the profile a bit and cut quite a bit off the bottom and moved some of the area up the wing into cleaner air where it's a little more effective and can do more for us. The trade-off is it's going to make the boat more of a handful in, in big breeze. It's a couple feet taller. Uh, makes it look sexy. <laughs> which, which is the most important, important part is that it's black and really sexy. So um, <laughs> that comes with its own challenges though. Uh, you know, keeping the thing dry and stuff like that. You don't want to pull an Aussie move and make it gain an extra 150 pounds on a wet day. Um, <laughs> we've got some control system differences in there that have been evolving. Um, we developed a couple systems that we pulled off the boat because we didn't really have time to optimize it before we got here. So we want something that we can just go out and sail and we know basically how it's going to work. So we know there's lots of gears left to find in this new wing. Um, it's going to be a process of finding them on the fly. Hopefully we find one a day that that'll do for me yeah. and uh, we just again with breeze like this out we just got to keep the thing upright in one piece and, and get it around the course and that's number one goal so hopefully it's robust enough to do that job yeah. got any more John? Um, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a we got a, a few we got a few more days we got a few more days to talk to these guys and hopefully we'll see how they go um, thank you for being with us thank you for supporting uh, our broadcast and uh, and spreading the love I think this is awesome and uh, and and I'm, 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 that's it, man. It's all about spreading the love, the soap opera, right? All right. Uh, check in later today. We might have some uh, live stuff for you. Or if not, then tomorrow morning, uh, 11 a.m. On the Water Anarchy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.